What up, YouTube? Here with a uh, post-fight video for the rematch between Devin Haney and George Gambosis. Um, before I give you a summary of what took place in the fight, I'm going to tell you how the results first. Devin Haney was able to pick up a decisive, unanimous decision win to retain his undisputed lightweight titles. Um, I personally had the fight score 119 to 109, 11 rounds to one in favor of Devin Haney. I only gave the opening first round to George Gambosis, and it could have been scored either way. Um, I gave that round to George Gambosis because he closed out the round very strongly, um, sending Devin Haney back to the ropes. Um, not that he necessarily connected with those heavy shots that he was throwing towards uh, Devin Haney. Um, nothing really significant connected in the first round. But uh, George Gambosis, like his nickname, came out ferociously when the uh, bell rung uh, for the opening round. Um, his game plan heading into this fight was to keep Devin Haney guessing. And um, he was using awkwardly timed, jittery movements to keep Devin Haney guessing. Using feints to try and uh, close the distance between him and Devin Haney. Um, because if y'all watch the first fight, uh, George Gambosis couldn't get past Devin Haney's jab and couldn't close that gap to get on the inside range to uh, try and outwork Devin Haney and pressure him and hit him with volume punches and use his fast punches and combinations to rock and uh, rattle um, Devin Haney in the first fight and in order for him to do that he's got to close that gap and using those uh, feints and jittery awkwardly timed movements were a part of his game plan to uh, uh, close that distance between uh, him and Devin Haney and it was working for a little while in the beginning rounds but once Devin Haney caught on to the rhythm of George Gambosis and was landing at well um, uh, it was over. Devin Haney had to fight from, from then on. Uh, George Gambosis looked discouraged once Devin Haney figured out uh, uh, his uh, uh, movements and timed his rhythm and once Devin Haney started um, landing at will um, those accumulations of punches and the punishment that George Gambosis was observing uh, throughout the whole fight was discouraging and tiring out uh, George Gambosis in the fight and Devin Haney I would say this performance was his most impressive performance thus far in his uh, undefeated young and up-and-coming career. Um, Devin Haney um, put on a better performance in this fight than the first fight. He used less clinches. He looked more aggressive. And at some points in the fight, whenever he had George Gambosis in trouble, um, it looked like Devin Haney was going to try and close out the show via a knockout. But it's going to be hard to do that versus somebody like uh, George Gambosis who is uh, durable and a a strong fighter who's got will good heart, good heart determination um and he's got a good strong chin on him as well so it's going to be hard to try and score a knockout versus somebody like him and um it's going to be hard for Devin Haney to do that regardless of the fact that um um, he was accumulating and landing so many shots versus George Gambosis uh, yesterday in the rematch. Um, Devin Haney, one of his biggest criticism that he's been facing uh, throughout his career has been for the lack of his power, his chin, and his durability. Um, and Devin Haney, on the on the flip side of things. After this fight, I don't think, you know, we should be questioning Devin Haney's power because whenever he stepped on the gas pedal and turned it up a notch and um, he was, you know, being aggressive with George Gambosis whenever he had him rocked, um, it, George Gambosis was definitely getting hurt by uh, Devin Haney's punches. Um, and Devin Haney's very accurate with his punches. Um, and he places his shots very well. And his his combos are mixed up very well together. And um, he doesn't have that one punch knockout power in his hands like a Tank Davis. But he accumulates um, very accurate and well placed punches, very fast as well, very fast and very flashy as well. So that's just as dangerous as a one punch power of 
of somebody like uh, Tank Davis possesses, right? Um, and uh, Devin Haney, I would say whenever he decides to turn it up a notch, it'll be trouble for anybody at whatever weight class that Devin Haney decides to fight at. And um, all throughout the fight, um, he used less clinches. He showed more of the aggressive side in the rematch when compared to the first fight. Um, he used less clinches. Um, but like the first fight, um, the, the jab was the key to his win. Um, that jab was able to keep George Gambosis at a distance that he wanted to keep George Gambosis at. Um, and um, yeah, the way Devin Haney is able to um, read his opponents and figure out their rhythm, um, his uh, skill set and his fundamentals are, are definitely top notch. And um, it looks like Devin Haney, um, what top rank is pushing for, they want Devin Haney to defend his undisputed lightweight titles versus Lomachenko next. Uh, Lomachenko's got a fight coming up in two weeks versus Jermaine Ortiz. He had a good uh, comeback fight in his last fight versus Richard Comey where he scored a stoppage uh, win. Um, he... He had to ask Richard Comey's corner to throw in the towel for him because of all the punches um, that he was landing on um, uh, Richard Comey in, in his last fight. It was much like how Devin Haney was placing all his shots together. It was the same thing with Lomachenko. He was accumulating uh, a, a lot of amount of punches on uh, Richard Comey uh, in his last fight. Um, that was his comeback fight after losing majority of the lightweight titles to Teofimo Lopez, who George Gambosis um, defeated to uh, become a, a majority champion at lightweight. That catapult George Gambosis as a uh, uh, top name at the lightweight division, and um, he's still he's still one of the uh, top contenders at the lightweight division. The lightweight division is arguably the most lively division currently in the sport right now. Um, they got a great mix right now, um, and they only got one champion, and that is of course Devin Haney, the youngest. Uh, undisputed champion in modern boxing history um, and he's the undisputed champion at the most recognizable uh, division in the sport right now and um, and in my opinion we gotta of course see how Lomachenko performs in his next fight versus Jermaine Ortiz but I think at at, at this day and age, it's quite a mismatch, especially after seeing what Devin Haney pulled off versus Gambosis yesterday. Um, Lomachenko's only getting older. His reflexes ain't the same anymore. Um, his speed isn't the same anymore. Um, he's only getting older. I don't think he's no longer in his prime. And this is a man who had to grow into the lightweight division. Lomachenko um, had started his career as a pro at featherweight he was a champion at featherweight and a super featherweight and when he was putting on those highlight real performances um that's when he was fighting at uh, featherweight and at super featherweight and um when he fought at lightweight he he had that um impressive stoppage win over Linares, but he did get dropped in the fight and that's something both haney and uh lomachenko have in common um haney was never dropped versus Linares. However, he was rocked versus Linares. And Linares also, like I said earlier, he did drop Lomachenko in that fight, regardless of the fact that Lomachenko won that fight. Um, so it's tougher for a Lomachenko uh, as a fighter who had to step up to the lightweight division when compared to somebody like Devin Haney who's been fighting at the lightweight division for the majority part of his career and um, he's much younger and is in his prime and is only getting better uh, as we speak. Um, the, the better fight and the more easier fight um, that could be made and this is definitely without a question a super mega fight and that's uh between two undefeated uh young and in prime uh american fighters is going to be a huge draw because both devin haney and who i'm about to say next uh is a current household name in the sport of boxing right now i want to see him versus shakur stevenson um shakur stevenson 
uh, he announced that um, he will be stepping up to 135 after he had to vacate uh, his titles at 130 in his last fight versus Conseco due to him not being able to make weight at 130. Um, he vacated his titles. He won that fight versus Conseco. Impressive performance once again by uh, Shakur Stevenson. And then he said he'll be making his uh, debut at 135 in his next fight. Of course, it would be, you know, quite the leap for uh, Shakur Stevenson to challenge Devin Haney for the undisputed, the one and only undisputed title at, at the hottest division in the sport right now. And as boxing fans, we tend to be impatient and we want to see the best possible matchups be made as quick as possible. But I don't think, you know, the way how boxing works, I don't think that they going to do that. And we got to see how Shakur Stevenson performs in his debut at 135. And I'm, and I'm pretty sure and I'm pretty confident in... Shakur Stevenson's ability to pull off a W versus you know any contender at 135 and I say that fight is a easier fight to make it's more compelling than the Lomachenko fight versus Devin Haney um Lomachenko has the experience factor in 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 his uh, advantage because I I'm only saying that because he's fought at 135 longer. We got to see how Shakur Stevenson performs as a lightweight. There isn't a huge leap. It's only a five pound difference, and Shakur Stevenson will probably naturally fit more better. Um, and have less problems making weight at 135 when com when compared to 130. Um. But he's also a um, decorated amateur, much like uh, Devin Haney, undefeated, and that's more of a compelling bout, like I said. Um, and there's, you know, obviously Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia. I know Ryan Garcia had officially moved up to 140, and um, Tank Davis, um, he fluctuates between 135 and 140. He could fight at either weight classes. Um, however, that's going to be a more of a difficult fight uh, to be made because of the promotional differences. Uh, Devin Haney and both uh, uh, Shakur Stevenson and Vasil Lomachenko, they work with top rank. So that's that those those matchups are are not a problem uh, to be made. And unlike the Tank Davis versus Devin Haney fight, because Tank Davis works with Floyd Mayweather, Al Heyman, and PBC, and Ryan Garcia, if he wants the big money fights and, you know, those career-defining fights, he's going to have to, you know, fight these guys um, who I'm talking about right now. And he's uh, working with uh, Oscar De La Hoya and Golden Boy. And it's rumored that Garcia and Tank, they've been, you know, talking crap to each other back and forth for a while now. It's rumored that uh, that mega fight could potentially be next for both Garcia and Davis. Um, but who knows what's next for uh, Devin Haney. Like I said, um, the lightweight divisions got got arguably the best mix currently in the sport right now um but it looks like top rank is going for Lomachenko if he gets through Jermaine Ortiz and um I no I'm not I'm probably not gonna make a prediction video if I have the time for it I'll, I'll give a preview video to the Lomachenko Ortiz fight um um you know I, I, I was meaning to give a prediction video for all the uh, all the fights that happened uh, this past Saturday, I, I didn't have the time to uh, make those videos because you know, you know, regular, regular life stuff outside of YouTube. Um, so yeah, I was expecting Devin Haney to win, much like the first fight. Um, but I didn't expect Devin Haney to win. Uh, much more convincingly than he did when compared to the first fight like we saw yesterday in the rematch between Haney and Gambosis. Um, with that being said, shout out to Devin Haney. Much respect. All the credit go to him um, for that uh, spectacular performance yesterday. Um, and another thing that I want to point out that um, I respected a lot from Devin Haney. This really got nothing to do with his in-ring ability. Um, it's the fact that he took a stance versus Ring Magazine. He decided not to wear the belt because um, 
they don't have him ranked as a top 10 pound for pound fighter in their rankings i don't see how any boxing media cannot have Devin Haney ranked amongst their top 10 pound for pound rankings especially if they're a respectable well-known uh boxing uh, uh uh outlet and ring magazine is considered to be boxing's bible and and you know it's hard to respect um their their top 10 pound for pound rankings if they don't have Haney in their top 10 pound for pound ranks and um that that you know I don't know, man. Um, ever since Ring Magazine was purchased by Golden Boy, um, they, 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 journalism integrity has, you know, gone down a little bit. That's my opinion, though. Anyways, y'all, um, that does it for this uh, post fight video, um, for Devin Haney versus George Gambosis 2, um, and Ring Magazine. Not that I care. But y'all definitely should have Devin Haney ranked amongst y'all top 10 pound for pound rankings after his performance yesterday. Um, anyways, that does it for this post fight video. Out of here, y'all. Comment, subscribe, share, like, all that good stuff. And peace.